know, hey, you're here. I'll try not to make fun of your English accent through this episode. Introduce yourself and tell us what you do here. I'm Harry, Harry Knight. Uh -huh. I am, as you pointed out, English. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. I've been here for about nine years. I'm one of the owners of Surf Simply. Surf Simply also has a podcast, and so yeah, I'm the uh, producer of the, the podcast and do all the edits and stuff like that. You do a heck of a job. That's actually, that's a really good podcast. You guys just got a new resort. We did. Congratulations. We did. Thank you. Yes, we're very pleased with it, very proud of it. We're super excited. Um, we've hopefully got the uh, inspectors from LEED coming down. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're aiming for LEED Platinum which will be one of only a couple of LEED Platinum buildings in the whole of Costa Rica. LEED is basically a designation for uh, sustainably friendly and environmentally friendly builds. It costs money, it takes time, and it's, it's quite difficult. You guys caught a lot of flack when you went to do this. Well, no, I think we caught a lot of flack because we built a massive chunk of a building. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people thought that we were building into the wildlife reserve, which, mm -hmm. which we weren't. Let's be honest, there's no such thing as a pretty building site. And we built a big building. It is built very sustainably. We've got rainwater collection and we've got this amazing bio nest water treatment plant. Should actually use less water than most private homes in, in this town. Got solar on the roof, which will provide a, at least 40% of our electricity. We've also got solar hot water. So we've, we've actually got a full bio nest. We have zero outgoing waste from the project whatsoever. Right on. Um, I mean, I want to thank you publicly in this forum, in this forum for doing that because people don't know. You guys were definitely not building in the nature preserve, but you know how rumors go. Yeah. So I'm happy that you're done. You're up. You're at the absolute highest level of sustainability that you can be. And I want to thank you for that. The population of this town has been incredibly supportive on the whole. You know, for every one negative message we've received, we've received, you know, five or six really positive messages from nice. from people. Thank you to, to everybody that did that. Off of sir, Simply and on to you. What do you like to do for fun? You this is why you brought in a public me in. forum. <laughs> what do I do in public? Oh, obviously, I surf a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a surf coach. That's that's what I do for a living. But I've always been fascinated by flying. When I was at school in the UK, we have a, a sort of junior military cadet force thing that you can go and join. And I can see you right in that. Yep. Loved it. I wanted to join the Air Force when I left school. However, I then flunked out of high school and didn't get any grades. So <laughs> <laughs> apparently they don't want pilots that haven't got a high school diploma. Goddamn dyslexia. A couple of years ago, I started flying a paraglider and a paramotor. We should point out you're the crazy guy flying around Guiones with the fan on your back. My butt fan? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. Yeah, not, parachute thing. not, yeah, it's like a, a big uh, fabric kite for traditional paragliding. You need a way to, you know, get up in the air. So you normally run off the edge of a cliff or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's too many trees around here for that. There's there's no good launch sites that I found. So uh, with a paramotor, you take a um, little two-stroke engine and a, and a fan, strap it to your back, and uh, you just take off from the beach. I guess we know why you like to fly. You went to an air show and it hit you like the Holy Ghost and you wanted to fly. Then we found out you're really bad at school. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're it, it's super intelligent, so it obviously has nothing to do with your smarts. It's just the way school processes. Uh, you might be giving me too much credit. Yeah. I think you'd be a nerd and you don't joke around because that's, that's when first people first meet you, they don't know this side of you that is actually quite humorous and you're, you're a pretty <laughs> smart ass and I really enjoy that about you. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel that, that school, certainly the English school system and I think from what I've seen, you know, most school systems, I don't think they do a very good job of preparing kids for real life. And so suddenly everybody's learning about Oxbow Lakes in geography and geography and reciting the kings of England. But I, I never got taught how to fill in a tax return. Probably never, never learned about compound interest. Never learned to sew on a button. That's stuff you need in the real life. You know, one, one day you're going to have a job interview the next day and your button's going to come off your shirt. Bad experience of school and not becoming a pilot gets you into surfing and you move to Costa Rica and that's not so bad either. Uh, yeah, it's been a little bumpy path, but but no, it's been, it's been fun. Hey, is sailing... Um, in any way as fun as surfing? Uh, I think it's different. I know it's different, but is it um, fun? I, uh, I think so. That, it, that wasn't so convincing for me. You <laughs> think a lot of weird stuff's fun. <laughs> Modern boats in a good wind. Uh, just brilliant. And when you get a, a sailing boat on the plane and the thing's just cruising along downwind, it, there's, there's that same wonderful just gliding sensation. And it's, it's fun. And actually, that, that's what I love about paragliding, you know, get rid of the engine. That's what I love about that. You, you get up in the air and there's, there's just, you're just hanging there in space. Wow. 
and there's just the wind whistling through the wires and you can see everything that's going on but you can't really see what it is that's keeping you up in the air and it's it's wonderful it's really wonderful the danger factor has got to be high um, I believe that, that certainly flying around with the motor on mm-hmm. is one of the safer forms of general aviation. Question. Yeah. Is it safer to ride to Super Nosara on your quad or to fly around with your weird backpack fan thing? My butt fan? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely safer to fly around. I'm just putting this together. You've seen Guiones and Pallada, or Playa Nosara and Esperanza and everything You've seen it more than anyone else here. What are your board preferences? Man, that's a really hard question. The board I like most is the one that's going to fit the conditions. Yeah, I'd, so I, I don't have a, I don't have a firm like this board. And at Guiones, the wave is uh, it's a cream pop. Mid length is something I've always been anti. I've never thought there was a place in the lineup for a fun board. Now. I'm trying to learn how to ride a middling. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people are riding the wrong board. One of the things we've done is, number one, we tried to break down all the various different skills within surfing. And then the second thing we've done is created a volume to weight chart. We've linked it directly to this tree of knowledge. There is no such thing as like riding a board that's too big. There's definitely the problem of riding a board that's too small. The better you get, the more fun you can have in a wider range of conditions. The thing that's been really annoying me, Frickin' sizing things in fractions of an inch. Hmm. You're a very logical man. So not making sense is hard for you. It upsets me. Do with the calculations. Yeah, what were we actually talking about? I don't know. Carry on. The people who taught me how to surf were just like, don't ever ride one of those. Those are for kooks. And I was like, okay, I don't want to be a kook. I'm not going to do that. We're all <laughs> hypocrites, man. I've got a fun board for you to try. What is a long board to us? You can never se- go too big, se- though. Se- Tell me about that board you're talking about. Okay, sorry, sorry. You say moving around and turning. That, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. still fun. Yeah, super fun. I don't know if I believe you. And there's way more technique hmm. to a good, efficient turtle roll. Once you've got the technique down, duck diving's great. You do have certain advantages in doing that in that you are a big unit. But I certainly don't find like rolling a nine-foot board through a bunch of white water that much harder than than duck diving my shortboard you're going to spend 80 or 90 percent of your time in the water paddling around trying to be in the right place at the right time at the right speed to get the opportunity to stand up on the board and look cool yeah that's true let's talk about wave pools what are your thoughts because you went to one actually i've surfed, i've surfed a couple of different wave pools been out to the one in abu dhabi Jealous i've tried to surf the wave garden one in the uk and every time i've tried to go there it's broken and i've got to surf Slater's one in California. I mean, the wave is incredible. It is a little bit weird. You have to like paddle this funny like S course in order to catch the waves. The wave's insanely long. If you surf start to finish on that wave, it's like 45, 50 seconds, something like that. Yeah, I think surfing's, it's been stagnant for a really long time, in mm. my opinion. Yeah, I, 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 surfing is incredibly conservative. We don't like anything new until Slater's using it. There yeah, is, like, there literally is no- Literally every single thing that comes, surfers, yep. We're idiots. Surfers are the worst. There is so much stuff that we just have no idea about the surfboard. To the best of my knowledge, nobody has any idea what direction the water flow is past the fins when you're doing a turn. <laughs> no one yeah. said we had a high production um, value. I see a bet coming. All right, back to the bet. Let's say 30 years. Okay. I think surfboards will go both directions. Have you seen that one in Australia? Thanks. Oh, it's a Mad Max come to surf and oh, it's amazing. Crap. That is the most steampunk bit of engineering I've ever seen. Uh, I don't know who did it originally. I mean, they've, they've got Oki and Barton Lynch as the front men for it, but I assume some highly intelligent professor at a university came up with well, it. Well, definitely wasn't, no offense, it definitely wasn't Oki. <laughs> 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 oh, you think? I think surfers should stop bitching about wave poles as a bad thing. I think they need to go put wave poles on the Gaza Strip. There's good surf on the Israeli coast. No, 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 um, no, 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 that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not. I don't, I don't think they're going to stop shooting each other if they only have a soft top. Yeah, everyone could get barreled. All the problems of the world will go away. That's the interesting one, actually, with, with, with the wave pools. Is it going to devalue the barrel? Is the barrel only valuable because of its scarcity? Jeez, man. Maybe you're getting kind of analogous into like the one percent they'll phrase. It's going to be an interesting problem to your uh, Middle East peace process. So what we've established today that surfers are idiots. Surfers are the worst. Climbers are idiots, and British people are worse than United States people because you guys still have halfway embraced the metric system, and your education system sucks. 
And the Kitty yeah, Wildsport. I'm not sure if I'm going to go that England's worse than America because of it, but I'll hey, definitely concede those points. All right. Who's the bigger imperialist power? Uh, oh, goodness. Who's, okay. Let's talk about Nassar. Like, what, do you, what do you like about this place? Uh, the reason that I'm here, the reason that Surf Simply is here, is I do genuinely believe that this is probably one of the most consistent surf breaks anywhere on the planet. I, I think this is a great community as well. Welcoming and friendly lineup. It's the we, nicest lineup I've ever seen. We, yeah, it's different to what it was when you and me moved here, but it's still, you walk around, this is still a little a little town in the jungle. Big shout out to all the people who made that happen in the past. Yeah. We don't have big hotels, mm-hmm. barring that terrible one those Surf Simply guys have just built. I mean, <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> what's what's the dark side? Getting stuff from Amazon's pretty tough. I've heard some rumors about that. I hope that yeah. happens. That'd be great. Yeah. Well, I'm, it is expensive to eat out. The quality of life I have here is insane. I'd love to pull it off to where I could bounce back and forth between here and Nicaragua. That's like here 20, 30 years ago. I think the past 10 years and the next 10 years. So this 20 year time period, I think will be the sweetest time period to live here. No offense to chicken filled stores and shops. I didn't mean it as an offensive thing. This community is, I guess, a little different to a lot of other communities. Were you here when we used to have to drive to Samra to get gas? Whenever... Health and safety would not be happy with it. Yeah, what a mess. What's the stuff you like? I like that people are friendly. Subtlety um, is not an option. No. Uh, as far as Nosara specifically, it has to be the community. That's something that's hard to describe to people who first mm-hmm. come to the town. You're telling me I should buy something here when it's more expensive, it's less accessible, and the wave's not as good. Yep, I'm telling you all those things. But there's a, there's a fabric of the community that is very hard to... Uh, find i don't think i've ever seen an expat community quite so pulled together my biggest dislike is that i got here first syndrome yeah my rule number one don't make sense of things no matter what happens in a day you can't surprise me i've driven down the road and had my entire wheels just fall off i think maybe a lot of my biggest dislikes are also some of my likes yeah and that's why i wrestle with that as you can hear anytime you listen to this thing (laughs) (laughs) So what about your three favorite restaurants in Osara? Would- Almendros, out in Esperanza. I always like going to La Luna. I was pizza. just about to say, you're European. You guys are wusses. You know, the restaurant I've been really enjoying recently is um, DSPS. For as long as I've been here, mm-hmm. like the range and variety of food that we've got has always been good and it's only been getting better. Hey man, we need to get back sometime and have a good a good fight to see if i like this surfboard you're talking about yeah is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to i really um can't say thank you enough to to all the people that have have given us so much help and support um with with the building project at at guiones um it's it's been really great and and actually not just with this building project like everything surf simply has done over the last nine years um yeah thank you to everybody that's that's helped and supported us Right on, man. People love your product, and I'm really happy that it's working so well. It's very kind. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you.